Do you have this one thing in place before you do your next blog post? Stay tuned, I'm going to tell you what it is. Hey, it's Philip here, the Curly Marketer. You're very welcome to today's Curly Marketer tip. It's the second video in my blogging series. If you missed the first one where I asked, does a business need to blog? I put the link in the comments below and you can read it on my website. Well, today I'm asking, have you got this one thing before you write your next blog post? And what is that? Well, of course, it is a blogging strategy. I think it's very important that you lay out a plan of action when you take on board blogging because there's just no point getting onto the computer, uh, writing a potential post and posting it and hoping for the best. I think you have to be strategic about it and have, a, I suppose, a plan of action so that you know yourself as to what you want to achieve the best type of post that's going to resonate with your audience and a way of ensuring that you can stay consistent. So here's a couple of tips for you uh, to create this strategy. The first thing is set yourself some objectives. What do you want to achieve from your blog? Maybe you want to increase your uh, awareness and get people to your web page. Do you want to increase um, as a result of that maybe come web page ranking, your SEO? Do you want to generate sales from your blog? Whatever it is, write it down, that's your objective. And then whatever way you then craft your blog post and action that should be all focused on trying to achieve those objectives. I think you then need to kind of then choose what are we going to write about? What is the blog topics that you want to create? I think you should talk to your customers, find out what their challenges and their pain points are. Look at your industry. What are the trends happening? Kind of pull on your own experience, your internal staff. What do they have? Brainstorm, get all these topics together. And then you can use a, um, a tool which is completely free called Answer the Public. Put in your chosen topic words into this and this will give you back potential blog post titles questions that have been uh, based on real internet search queries. It's a fantastic tool. I would advise you check it out. And then you can take your proposed blog post topics, use the Google Keyword Planner and get an understanding as to whether the search volume on your chosen topic is high, medium or low. Now, if it's low, I wouldn't discount it. You know, your industry could be quite niche and there may be an opportunity for you on this particular blog post title to on this blog post title to particularly get a foothold and become a bit of a thought leader uh, in the space. Uh, so don't discount anything. I think look at all of the opportunities and see how best that you could make your mark on a particular uh, topic or post. Next stage, create your editorial calendar. You need to create um, a calendar of to when you're going to blog each week or is it going to be each month and detail the day in the week and plan out a month in advance so that you know each day or each week or each month when you're going to blog, who's going to be doing the blog and the topic and it keeps you accountable so that it means that you stay consistent and you don't start blogging and then suddenly fall off because your audience, if you start to build up an audience and especially with your customers, if they start to look forward to reading your blog and then you stop doing it, it's very hard to pull those people back. So an editorial calendar keeps you kind of on track so that you know what's happening week to week, month to month from a content publishing basis. I think the next thing then is choose your format. Two of my favorite blog post formats are the how-to post and the list post. They're very self-explanatory and I think that's why they're so popular with people. The list post essentially gives you 10 ways to do X. Uh, it's very then clear from an audience perspective, right, here are going to be 10 solutions to this problem that I've searched for. Great, I'll dig in. Then the other type of format is the how-to post. Once again, you know, how to solve this. Once again, your headline is basically kind of telling people how to solve a problem which will resonate and they're instantly kind of from the start know that they're going to get an answer to the solution. Now, as you kind of branch out and get more experience, you can start to do blog posts which are maybe like infographic type posts where you use a visual kind of imagery and construct to relay information. Maybe you might do cheat sheets or checklists, et cetera, et cetera. But I think the how-to and the list posts are two great formats to start off with. How long should your post be? This is the eternal question that all bloggers ask. Maybe I should do it for 500 words. Should I do it for 2000 words? Now, yes, the research does point to that the longer posts are deemed by Google more authoritative and hence get better ranking. But I think you craft the post based on the topic and the audience. So if you can craft a solution that's really well read and real kind of 
put together uh, and you can do it in 700 words well then i would go with that there's no point trying to pad it out but if you're doing something that's almost like an industry trends piece of research well then you, you won't be able to do that in 500 that would probably be three four five thousand words so base it on the topic and the audience and then craft the post accordingly more detail the better but if you can get all the detail and it's on par and it's high quality and you have it done in 700 words great i think critically when you're writing your blog post the most critical element of it is your headline so this is the next step creating that headline that's going to bring people in to want to read more of your information because 80 percent of people don't read beyond the headline because the headline just didn't wow them so the tool that i use is the co-schedule headline analyzer put in your proposed headlines into that and it will grade them for i suppose impact and emotiveness and if you can get a score of 70 plus you're very much in the ballpark so check that out that's definitely a tool that you should be using for crafting your headlines the blog format remember we're all reading blogs now on mobile so just don't have a wall of text to break up your posts use paragraphs use subheads use imagery maybe embed some videos use charts etc make the experience of reading visually appealing so there's a bit of text maybe an image a bit of text a chart a bit of text a video etc etc i think optimize your post is the next stage very important um yoast great plugin i think the best plugin for seo on wordpress i wholeheartedly recommend using that because what it does is it will review your blog post and it will literally tell you all of the problems and you can go in and fix those you know from you haven't got your keyword in the first paragraph you have no keyword set for um, the SEO of the post. You have no meta description written. None of your images have the alt tag or the alternative text, which allows Google, when they crawl the site, have an understanding of what your image is about. So use Yoast and they have a traffic light system. If you get the green light, it looks like your post is in SEO positive, which is always good. I think then, you know, don't forget, do have a subscription, a capture um, subscription um, box for your blog. Now, yes, be GDPR compliant. Make sure that people are very um, understanding and you're very upfront as to how you're going to use their email uh, when they subscribe to your blog. But just don't not have it. I think it's important that when people come and read your content on your website that you capture an email because you want to be able to stay in touch with them send them new blog posts because eventually they may like your content and your solution so much that they may end up being a customer so do you know um don't disregard that you know yes be gdpr compliant but still have a form there that people can subscribe i think the second thing is make sure that you have a social sharing plugin on your blog allow people to be able to tweet and post to facebook and to linkedin your blog post the amount of blogs I've seen that don't have this, and it's very frustrating because I might read something and I so want to share it to my audience, but I just can't. And you're missing out on a huge opportunity to bring your content to a much wider audience and potentially new prospects. I think the next thing is when you've posted your blog, just don't sit back and go, great, we're fabulous, well done, and pat yourself on the back. You have to promote it. So if you're on Twitter, make sure you tweet it out and maybe schedule that it gets tweeted out maybe multiple times, but obviously according to Twitter rules, make sure you change the tweet text. You know, turn it into a LinkedIn publisher post and post it. Maybe post it to some LinkedIn groups, email your clients to say that you have a new blog post or turn it into an ebook and send that to them. But promote it, just don't post it and forget about it because you have to kind of be aware that social and the internet it flies at such a huge rate so you have to kind of keep promoting your blog to get it out there and then to wrap up if you've got multiple blogs on a particular topic don't forget that in your new blogs to link back to some of the older posts that could be related because once again it creates a lovely story for the reader and it also allows google when they're reviewing your your blog to kind of create a hierarchy get an understanding of what your blog is about and the same vice versa go back in and check your old blog post do they need to be updated and link from them to your new post so i hope you found those tips to create your blogging strategy of use as always i'm on twitter at pete twyford connect to me on linkedin and i'm over on the curly and i'll see you again soon for another curly marketer tip take care